welcome back to Animal Liberation TV. So I think uh, quite enough celebrating has been done now after <laughs> my poxy silly Section 4 thing was dropped. I mean, it was such a minor charge anyway, but um, yeah, so um, I think enough celebrating now. It's time to crack on with uh, things again. Um, so I wanted to do this second episode about the Animals Betrayed Coalition, a blueprint for animal liberation. Um, which I've said in the last episode is always up for debate and modification. It's just a set of ideas being thrown out there. Um, <clears throat> now, in the last episode, I read out an article by Nestor Macnow. Um, bless him. Um, I love his writings. Um, it was maybe a little bit abstract for some people. So, for this one, um, what I'm going to do is talk about the concept of it and introduce the ideas of the Animals Betrayed Coalition which isn't a history lesson for once and first of all I need to say that nothing about the Animals Betrayed Coalition is illegal um, so I just wanted to say that from the very start so what I'm going to read from today is this Animals Betrayed Coalition website which I will put a link to in the description box below the video so in my videos everyone should always check the description boxes because there's often bits of information relating to the video or other stuff in those description boxes. So always look in the description boxes of my videos. So I'll put a link to this in the description box. And the first page we're going to do is Animals Betrayed Coalition, dedicated to ending animal experiments. And I'm going to read out the stuff of the first page, which is home. And then there's, I'll quickly flick you through, which I'm going to read in uh, do an episode each on each one. This is a page on Barry Horn. This is about LabCorp. This is about the Shack campaign. Then Animals Betrayed Coalition Strategies, Tactics, What You Can Do. Okay, so we're going to go through those one episode at a time. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to do this first page. So some people um, will have had a physical copy of the Animals Betrayed Coalition newsletter 1. Um, the newsletter is called the Rubicon um, and uh, that's just basically this website is just a digital version of that leaflet okay but uh, if people go to Camp Beagle they can pick up copies of the Rubicon and I think Something like two and a half thousand copies were printed, maybe. So I'm not quite sure how many are still left. I think about half of them have gone. So I think there's still copies at Camp Beagle, that, in case you're interested. Okay, so I'm going to read out this first page. Animals Betrayed Coalition, dedicated to ending animal experiments. Then there's a link to the To Hell With Compromise story of Barry Horn trailer and then there's some blurb okay <clears throat> animals betrayed coalition there's some weird noise outside I think someone's having a car repaired or something um, the animals betrayed coalition was the name given to the support campaign for Barry Horn's third hunger strike in 1998 demanding new labor implement its pre-election promise of a royal commission into vivisection the hunger strike lasted an awe-inspiring 68 days, the effects from which Barry died from in 2001. In an attempt to reignite a grassroots animal rights liberation movement, building on the successes of Barry and many others in the past, we have resurrected this name. The aim of the Animals Betrayed Coalition is to help form a global network of individuals and groups who wish to collectively focus on anti-vivisection work. ABC is a strictly lawful network. While we support all actions for animal liberation and encourage civil disobedience, we are a legal group. Radicalisation has become a term demonised by media, the media and governments in an attempt to reduce a mo movement's potency and effectiveness. But a radical movement is exactly what ABC is proudly all about, not for the sake of it or to be just be militant in words, but because a radical movement is not only right, but also necessary because the legislators and the money makers will do all they can to stifle and hold back real change. 
which can only come about if pressure is applied, in this case to vivisection research. We hope to reach out and captivate the new rising vegan movement to get involved in grassroots effective anti-vivisection actions and campaigns. The ABC hopes to expand to have local, regional and national meetings and demonstrations leading to a global network through its own successes. The three things required by the movement are 1. Organisers of campaigns and actions 2. Funds Unfortunately, money is needed for every part of activism from printing to fuel to equipment. 3. Activist ABC in the vein of Barry Horn believes that self-sacrifice is the key to making solid changes in the struggle towards animal liberation. Then it's got uh, the email address, animalsbetrayed at gmail.com. You can sign up for the latest news. And then there's interfauna pictures Oops. at the bottom. Okay, So that's the first page to introduce you to the idea. So the first thing I want to say is the Animals Betrayed Coalition idea isn't a new group. It's not a new group, okay? Um, it's about structure. So, um, and what I think I've observed in the past uh, when I've seen successful things has been that uh, when there's been a network of groups, okay, that's always been pretty much fundamental to the movement being successful. Um, people being active in the sense of the, you know, they're keeping busy doing stuff. And I don't mean illegal stuff. This is nothing to do with illegal stuff or the ALF, this uh, ABC series. Okay. And the idea that people focus on one area and one company, um, one at a time, you see. I thought there was more blurb on that page. Where is it? Maybe I'm wrong on that. Okay. No, that was on that one. Okay. Yeah, there's more on the other pages. Okay. So, um, and it's important to focus. The, the, there was there was a period, uh, kind of the mid '90s and even early '90s, where. Uh, there were local groups all over the place, but there were, people were just having demos against everything, <laughs> you know, like the circuses, the zoos, and there were there would be there was one point, um, at some point in the nineties, I can't remember when, when it was just a national demo every week in some town or city against some animal abuse establishments, and they just attract the local people. So it's much better to concentrate on one campaign specifically at one time. Which I'd argue at the moment would be, of course, the NBR Beagles. Okay, so um, the idea of the Animals Betrayed Coalition is a network of groups. So any, any but to focus on anti-vivisection alone, the Animals Betrayed Coalition is an anti-vivisection um, idea. If we were to ever get rid of all animal experiments, not one taking place on this island then the ABC would move on strategically to another industry. <laughs> so, you know, I can't see that that's going to happen anytime soon. It's an anti-vivisection group um, following in the veins of uh, the idea of Barry Horn that strategically speaking vivisection is actually winnable in the UK and that the ramifications on all animal abuse from shaking that industry out of the UK would be huge and we'd pretty much start booting all of animal abuse out of the UK bit by bit. Okay, so, um, yeah, so the idea is an umbrella group of anyone is, you know, you can be, in, I don't know, you could be Norwich anti-vivisection group, yeah, but you just go along to the Animals Betrayed Coalition meeting in your area. Um, and so when I've seen the animal rights movement uh, in really successful phases, uh the Shack campaign was obviously huge, hu hugely successful, but that came out of the 90s um, networks of campaigns. And I wasn't around to see the local groups in the 80s, but I'm pretty sure that there were lots of local groups and lots of networks there. But I saw it in the 90s, and in this, the later part, the second part of the 90s, um, the Animal Rights Coalition, which was 
um, basically a lot to do with uh, one guy called Neil Lee and Roger Yates has done a couple of videos on his channel recently about Neil and as a side uh, point here uh, Neil Lee was the first person I ever got arrested with which I will cover in my series Badger Stories about my own interactions um, with police and stuff uh, through the movement um, and that was when we were picketing some fair shops, the last two fair shops in Manchester independent fair shops uh, which we shut down over a matter of uh, weeks really, but what, it was about four months but we shut them out down by picketing and I got arrested outside uh, one of the fair shops shortly before it shut with Neil um, and I'll talk about that in Badger Stories but <clears throat> on the wall here is actually one of the Art News leaflets. Keep up to news with Art News. So he did a newsletter, and if you watch Roger's programs, he's got some photos and I think examples of something showing um, the newsletters with all the dates and the roundup of news and stuff like that. So Neil Lee was, as you'll see, was tireless in his work, and the Animal Rights Coalition was kind of a lot, really, that was kind of Neil's work and ideas and stuff a lot of that momentum um, and so what would happen was and in the late 90s I r helped run um, with a couple of other people Manchester Animal, Animal Protection as it was known in the later 90s um, and we did that from about 97 to about 99 um, as part of kind of uh, me doing the Huntingdon Death Sciences campaign so we had a group in Manchester that was really into the HLS stuff and I'll talk all about that in Badger Stories um, and so helping run the Manchester group we used to have uh, monthly meetings <coughs> at that point we had them in pubs mostly but um, oh we did the Quakers Friends Meeting House uh, quite a lot during that period actually because that was more peaceful than the pub and generally speaking, the Quakers Friends meetings, Meeting House is uh, a good place to hire if you're looking to hire to have meetings. Because the whole point of the Animals Betrayed Coalition is that this isn't an internet group, you know, where we're all going to like and share and whatever else. This is about getting people off their devices, into the real world, meet your fellow activists or fellow campaigners um, down the, a, a local pub in your town or city, or a meeting house, or church hall, or whatever. Maybe someone's living room, or conservatory. I don't know. You know, you know. At first, a lot of your groups, if you set up groups in areas, they start off small. Um, so what we used to do in Manchester was we'd have monthly meetings, and um, we'd go through the plans for the next month and a roundup of the news of the previous month. Um, we'd have a little agenda we'd pass around for everyone to write anything they wanted to talk about. We'd have one person chairing, or nowadays you kind of call it facilitating, um, the meeting. And then we'd go through the agenda point by point. We'd keep a bit of control of too much chatter and stuff like that. And that's a meeting. It's, you know, um, I've <laughs> done, attended and organised hundreds of meetings. Oh, my God, you know, meetings kill me. But you have to have them. You have to have them. They're essential. And then what we used to do was have regional meetings, sort of every two, three months or something as well. And that's when we'd meet up with Liverpool primarily from Manchester. Obviously Manchester and Liverpool were the two big groups during that period when I was helping run MAP, Manchester Animal Protection. Um, but other people would come from other places. And that's when we talk about sort of more strategic ideas about campaigns like at that point it was let's... I propose let's target Nat West in a big way because Nat West, uh, Nat West invest in death, Nat West invest in death. <laughs> um, I know all the old ones. Boots, torture, beagles, boycott boots. <laughs> um, anyway, so the Nat West campaign though, um, that was something that we said, yeah, we're going to help be part of in a big way, and I'll talk about, all about that in Badger Stories at some point. And so we'd have the local meetings every month in Manchester, every two or three months meet up regionally and just talk about strategies and then every half a year or once a year we'd meet up as a National Animal Rights Coalition meeting. I mean the Southerners don't like going north, <laughs> that's what you find out when you live up north. So 
uh, nearly always the national meetings would be somewhere like, I don't know, Northampton, Oxford. I mean, I've been to ones in Manchester as well. You know, I've been to quite a lot of those ones. Um, and that was when we'd really sort of like all the local groups, you know, there'd be people from Coventry, Northampton, Oxford, London, Brighton, Bristol, Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, all over Nottingham, Leeds. I don't want to miss people out, but there's people from all over the place at these national meetings. Sometimes we'd have 100, 200 people. Um, and that's when the really big decisions kind of sort of like, where, what are we going to do? We've got to focus on Hill Grove or whatever, you know, um, this campaign. And everyone would be selling their campaign. But that won't be necessary in this because what I propose is the campaign is focusing on vivisection is LabCorp, the old HLS. Um, we put we put all of our resources in uh, as a network into that. So I hope you get the idea that if if you're if you're part of an anti vivisection group now, this isn't a new anti vivisection group. This is a group. Uh, it's an umbrella framework to join all anti-vivisection groups together under the name Animals with Trade Coalition because um, yeah if you watch the first and last the previous episode which was the first episode in this series where I, I read out an article on there by Nesta Macknall who we should take his words very seriously yes it's from 100 years ago his words but human nature is human nature we're still fighting capitalism the same battle he was fighting and hierarchy um, so, um, sorry, something's come up on the screen. Right, so, um, we should take his words very seriously because he commanded um, an anarchist army of up to 110,000 troops and they actually defeated uh, the Bolsheviks, uh, you know, Lenin's lot, the Red Army, and also the Nationalists, the White Army, it's quite a few times. The anarchists beat them. So, if we want to hear from someone, okay, he wasn't an animal liberationist, but in some senses an anarchist is an animal liberationist, which you've heard me talk about before. But anyway, it's all about power. But if we want to learn about someone who's organised, achieved a lot, and is obviously good at sort of thinking about how it can all work, then someone who's commanded an army of up to 110,000 people following a certain set of ideas... Um, we should listen to those words and his main um, the thrust of the stuff he was saying last week if I try and remember rightly the main things were um, that uh, you need to be active in what you're doing you need to designate people's roles during the revolution most importantly pre-revolution so that means that you know, if we if we're organising a campaign against LabCorp and MBR as part of that initially, um, to make sure we wipe out MBR at acres and get kick them out of the UK, um, then um, yeah, I've lost my thread of thought there. So um, yeah, the point is uh, about the the focus. Okay, so he, he was also saying that you need one active collective which is what the animals betrayed coalition would be it would be a collective of all of us all anti-vivisection groups and individuals joining together to focus on mbr then LabCorp, and then anything else that's left around after we got rid of LabCorp out of the uk all legally none of this is i'm not promoting anything illegal um so and i do think that a network of local groups is absolutely essential to this, absolutely essential, because that's when you're going to, you know, the Agenda 2022 I, I put, which was organise, recruit and activate, which like I said, isn't about illegal stuff. Um, uh, if you've got local groups, it gives people a chance to join in their town and city, you know, and then you can either do things in your town and city, like do stalls or film nights and events, or get a minibus and go to Camp Beagle and other demos and LabCorp hopefully soon enough and the people that support them in the network. Um, so I've got a big list of stuff to do here to say. <laughs> so Neil Lee and the, uh, the Animal Rights Coalition phase, it was all those local group networks that allowed 
the success of those breeder campaigns in the 90s, which I've mentioned many times, all the breeder campaigns where we shot lots of breeders collectively as a movement. Okay, now that was only possible because of the strength of movement, which was through all these local groups. So, oh yeah, that's what I was saying. Organize, recruit, activate. It's not illegal. Um, organize um, by having local groups and having meetings with other local, you know, in the region, then having national groups. That's going to bring us organized recruiting. People in their towns and cities can actually physically go to meetings and demos and stuff with people from their local area. And then activate if you're going out onto the streets giving out information or doing a demo outside somewhere, then you're being active. Okay, so this animal uh, betrayed coalition idea is is a framework for us to have a, a strong movement. That's my argument, and to focus on anti vivisection and specifically lab core, and then as part of that, this MBR acres uh, is the real part of that. Okay. So, and ultimately, you know, hopefully see it go international. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep this, I'm going to wrap it up there. There's lots more to say. Um, I'm going to talk more in the next Animals Betrayed Coalition uh, episode about uh, my plan, my next phase in the plan, which is uh, about helping people set up uh, Animals Betrayed Coalition meetings in their area and get it kick started so I'm going to talk all about that in the next episode so I hope that that made some sense um, the idea that uh, a single framework and platform a single target as such um, a great way to recruit people actually physically meeting people physic in the flesh let's get rid of this social media networking no, we didn't have that in the 90s, and look how successful it was, you know. if I'm convinced that if we need a strong movement, because this is the other thing, we need lots of people, we need a much, 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 much bigger movement. We need a huge movement to achieve. I mean, we don't on a practical level, but, you know, we do need a bigger movement to have the people who come out of that that are willing to, you know do things like um, occupy places and stuff. So we need a big movement to draw the handful that would probably be do civil disobedience and stuff out of that. So we need a big movement. We need a radical movement, and I'm not ashamed to say that. And these days, you know, they try and put you on de-radicalisation programmes. I know someone, a fellow activist from back in the day, uh, she's been put on one of those. <laughs> Apparently they don't have a clue what they're doing with the animal rights angle. <laughs> Um, so, um, you know, we need a radical movement, a militant movement, a strong movement. We need a movement that can't be broken by the authorities, you see. This is the other thing. If we build up a network of local groups and they take out two or three people they say are organisers, well, if we've got a strong network of groups all over the country meeting regularly with each other and whatever um, and busy out there on the streets and outside places and stuff, um, you t the, the authorities take two or three people out and send them to prison or whatever there's still all the other local groups and other people will fill their places especially if we designate it as Nesta Macno recommended people's tasks during the revolution and after the revolution so we, we, we take people's skill sets because this is the other thing about growing and having local groups meeting in pubs you know someone might come along and say oh yeah I've got a huge van and that's really useful for transporting stalls around or I don't know what you know uh, some beagles <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm joking um, so or someone else might come along and say yeah um, I'm a graphic designer you know so they do really funky leaflets and stuff and someone else might come along and say um, uh, yeah I'm, I, I'm fairly you know I'm, I'm fairly well off here's some money to help with uh, getting a new van or a printer and someone else might say yeah I've got a printing machine you know at my work or something that I can use it's part of you know whatever or I'm a student I've got access to good cameras as part of my film course you don't know but these are the sort of things that we need to f uh, get people involved in in our towns and cities draw people in have good strong local groups and that will build a strong movement from the core outwards and the framework for which I propose 
uh, to help put this concept into motion with very much similar to the groups of the 90s which led to so many victories because there were so many of us you know every town and city had an animal rights group encouraging people to join in and come to their meetings and come on the demos with them you know how how the hell do you think however many it was two or three thousand people were at the hillgrove riot you know um, because of a network of local groups and I'm not doing this to <laughs> build up of enough people to start a riot that's not the aim the aim of this is to build up a strong successful movement to legally pressure uh, the horrendous acts of animal experiments out of the UK that's the aim and to build up an, an international network that's my kind of little vision well it's a big vision <laughs> isn't it? but it's a uh, just come out of my little brain so um, and that's because I'm basing this on experiences from the past so I hope some of this makes sense to you I hope you see the simplicity of the idea but the beauty of it and I hope that you've got some idea about how successful a network like this has been in the past I hope you can visualize the concept of it you know um, because we need we need to help those animals you know like let's get back to the problem here like right now Right now, I'm in Barry Horn HQ, as I call it. Right now, I'm, a, I'm you know, it's a Saturday night. I, I'm not out disco dancing <laughs> um, or raving or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's not exactly a wild, wild night for me, but I'm not in a uh, cage in uh, LabCorp, the old hunting and life sciences in Cambridgeshire, suffering from fertiliser poisoning in my fifth week of... Uh, injections or like some inhaling some noxious gas as a beagle or a primate or whatever animal they have in love you know so we've got we've got to stop this stuff man we society this whole vegan thing it validates the concept of animal liberation when people find out about animal abuse they don't like it because it's nasty it's picking on other life forms because you can because they can't fight back, you know what I mean? Um, and they're voiceless in the sense of normal communication and rights, you know. So it's down to us. It's down to us to stop this stuff. Society is validating it all with this whole vegan thing. People don't like animal cruelty. They really don't. It's sickening, isn't it? It's absolutely shocking. And that's what we need to get it back to. So... You know, it's it's great saying, yeah, I'm into animal liberation, Whoa. but, you know, on a practical level, how are we going to achieve this? How are we going to? And I propose that strong network of groups growing small at first, it will be a small thing, but if people like the idea of it and we get a few groups involved and we start doing the odd little thing, you know, that's not illegal, it's totally totally above board all this and we do things and people start catching on and I'm going to explain how I'm going to help promote it and everything in the next episode but excuse me so I really hope that um, you get a little bit excited by this idea the idea of visualizing what the movement could look like in a year two years three years five years Imagine five years' time, a, a, a network of local groups that's getting more efficient and it's getting bigger and it's got a really good reputation. Like, oh yeah, you want to get into animal rights? Oh, have you heard of the Animals Betrayed Coalition? No, what's that? Oh, it's this like national, international network of people that are just focusing on anti vivisection work and they've had this whole list of successes, you know, and they've done these things and they've done those things. And you look, check this out on the internet and these films and that stuff about them, you know. It, it could be big it could be big we could make something big and and that's one thing we do desperately need to do is grow we're a tiny movement you know we're a tiny movement at the moment um let's not kid ourselves and what we're up against is huge <laughs> we're up against in anti vivisection work we're up against the giant pharmaceuticals. I mean, <laughs> we know how much power they've got. We've seen that recently, haven't we? Or recently enough. Um, we're up against governments. We've got up against security services. We're up against police. We're up against all sorts of big money. You know, um, we're up against big propaganda campaigns. So we, we've got all the odds stacked against the sand. We're tiny. So... 
But, you know, <laughs> uh, we have to win because right now, as I explained before, there's animals suffering right now, you know, in these labs tonight, alone in a cage, probably totally mystified as to what life is, you know, they're stuck in a steel cage, you know, and they're feeling ill from the testing that's going on, and they're probably just frightened and abandoned and alone, and their life is literally, literally a living hell, you know, it's so fucking offensive, it's unbelievable, right, so we've got to stop it, we've got to stop it, and I propose uh, that we do this thing, the ABC, and we continue Barry's work, basically, um, and lots of other people's works. So I hope that um, <laughs> I've waffled on a lot, but I hope that you know I've repeated some things because I really wanted to get the point across, um, the points across. Um, so I hope you've got something out of it. Lots more coming up in the next episode about the ABC. Take care.